I'm Andy Dixon, the Assistant Vice President of Marketing at Colorado State University Global Campus, and I appreciate everyone who has joined us today for our first webinar of the new year um, on career success, uh, specifically in the technology fields, the educational leads for technology professionals. Um, I am honored today to be here with our program chair, Dr. Charles Lively. Um, he uh, oversees our information technology and computer sciences programs. And uh, we are also joined in the um, chat and everything from Charles Faithful and Reagan uh, Villa Villarreal. I probably butchered her last name, but they're with our enrollment team. So if anyone has any questions throughout the uh, presentation today, I hope that you feel free to ask those. So let's start there with a little housekeeping. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll be able to see a couple of buttons there. There's a Q&A button. And as you get any questions that comes up regarding um, our programs, regarding the IT industry, your personal career path, we want to make this as, as personalized and interactive as possible. Please ask those questions. We've prepared a very short number of slides, so we have as most opportunity to get to your individual needs as we can. And second of all, there's a chat feature. In that chat feature, feel free to introduce yourself. That's more for letting us know who's here, um, where you're calling in from, and just uh, get to know each other, you know, because we're it's amazing to see what people are coming from all around the United States and, in fact, the world at times for these. I personally am in snowy Colorado right now. We're getting a little bit of a blizzard. And uh, Charles is coming to us from Atlanta, Georgia. So um, please introduce yourself and let us know where you're calling from and, and what you're looking to get out of today also. So with that, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, we are excited to can share a few slides. Um, and, and I wanted to start by telling a little bit about who CSU Global is, for those of you who may not be as familiar with us. So CSU Global, Colorado State University Global Campus, is the first 100% online public state university within the nation. It was exclusively designed for learning online, and it's independently regionally accredited. And it was built to really provide working adults with a return on investment through, through career success. So our average student um, had, receives $4 in additional earning potential for every dollar they spend on tuition there. That certificate programs, bachelor's degree, master's degrees, um, really designed to fit education into your life with the flexibility and affordability and quality that it takes to be successful in your careers. Today specifically, again, we're talking about the IT industry and we wanted to, to spend a little time looking at the industry as a whole, so you kind of understand the different opportunities for jobs and career paths within there, and um, what data is saying is projected in terms of the growth of that industry. Well, we'll look at some individual career paths within the, in the industry, and then really talk a little bit about how you can kind of personalize your academic programs to meet those career goals, including the soft skills that you might need and learn through education, and then um, the different program offerings that we have to help you get there. So in um, Lively to get us started today. All right. Well, thank you, Andy, and thank you uh, for that introduction and background about CSU Global. Uh, thank you to all of the participants that are joining us today um, for your interest in CSU Global as well as our IT programs. So to kick things off, um, I'm just going to run through a, a industry outlook about the expected job growth in the IT field. So if you are interested in uh, a career in IT, the, the career outlook is very promising. On a general and a conservative scale over the next uh, decade, we're expected uh, job growth to be upwards of 13% in IT in general. When you get into more concentrated areas like software development and AI, we're looking for increases in job growth up to 20, 25, and 30%. Um, so the bottom line is that if you are interested in pursuing a, a technology-related area, then you'll, you'll be likely to take advantage of this. It's because current uh, current uh, applications for IT positions far exceed the, the applicants that are applying for them. So there, there are plenty of jobs out there. And here at CSU Global, we want to work to prepare you to pursue uh, those available positions in IT. 
And so let's move on. Next, where we'll talk about what exactly can you do in IT and what type of career, what type of salary would you be able to command? Well, depending on your area of focus, whether you get a bachelor's in IT or a bachelor's of computer science, uh, the available positions vary. Um, degrees requiring a bachelor's bachelor's degree offer a very comparable uh, pay salary. Uh, a computer programmer or software developer uh, on median pay is about 82,000 per year uh, up to a uh, computer information systems manager or a computer project manager that has a pay, pay average upwards to 139 on a median median salary scale there are various career paths that you can all you can focus on within the IT industry whether you're focusing on being a information security analyst uh, a network architect um, or, or system architect or system analyst as well and again with uh, these various positions CSU Global CSU Global has a number of programs and specializations that are aimed to help prepare you for these career fields and to help you help put you at an advantage when talking with employers. So we can move on to the next. So this is a, this is a great image that kind of gives puts things into perspective in regards to the career path you can take um, within your IT career. And this is what we call a career ladder for information technology and computer science. And the career at, this career ladder focuses on various uh, tracks. We have a technology project manager ladder, we have a cybersecurity ladder, and we have an IT support ladder and healthcare IT ladder. Each one of these allows for you to move up from an entry level position as maybe a IT project um, manage assistant um, to IT project manager or software developer to senior project manager or and then your executive level would be a director or vice president of operations. So this is able to give you a perspective on the type of career growth and trajectory that you're able to obtain once you do obtain the necessary credentials, which could be uh, your bachelor's or master's degree, as well as appropriate certifications as well. Uh, this is only a small subset of possible career paths that are out there. So in addition to talking to myself, um, you can also consult with our career services department as well to get an understanding of the, the type of career path that you can take moving forward as you complete your degree. Okay, and so how exactly uh, can CSU Global help you to achieve your expected career, goal, career goals? Uh, one of the, the benefits of the curriculum and the programs here at CSU Global is that we have a number of different paths to help you achieve your goals and be flexible in meeting the, the demands of your, your current professional and personal obligations. Uh, we have a the high value of higher education, where the we're available to provide for, provide for you a number of different paths. These paths include personalized learning paths that allow for you to uh, customize or create a, a personalized path towards reaching your degree, whether it's a bachelor's or master's degree. Um, this allows for you to integrate uh, transfer credits as well as obtain credits from uh, certifications as, as well. This also allows for you to partner with some of our custom training and certification partners to obtain additional credit utilizing the existing technical skills that you have. We also have what are called stackable credentials, which enable for you to customize your path or career ladder based on, based on your expected goals. And so as a BSIT student, you can take the RBSIT core and then also have appropriate specializations in areas of interest such as healthcare management, um, cybersecurity, or computer programming.
And so also in alignment with our, with our curriculum, we place a, a, a high focus on ensuring that our courses and curriculum are in alignment with industry certifications. As an IT professional, certifications carry a, a great deal of importance in offering employers a, a verified um, assessment of your IT skills. So a number of our, of our courses are based off of a number of available uh, industry-backed certifications, such as the CompTIA A Plus certification, Network Plus, Security Plus, uh, Project Plus. We have uh, courses that are aligned with uh, various Microsoft certifications, uh, as well as VM VMware certifications as well. And so the goal is being able to prepare you to have a foundational knowledge in this course. So when you are done, you're able to complete uh, or attempt the certification. Uh, and also, if you already have the certification credit, then what we can do is offer you course credit at CSU Global for the appropriate uh, for the appropriate class based on the certification. So in this case, if you have the CompTIA A plus certification, we could offer you credit for ITS 3, uh, 310, and therefore that cuts back on your time to graduation and completing your program. Now, talking more about the benefits of our, our curriculum here at CSU Global. Uh, in the IT program, we focus on hands-on training so that you are as prepared as possible when you go out into the workforce environment. So in order to accomplish this, we rely on a number of uh, highly recommended and highly utilized industry tools. Uh, for some of our systems and networking courses, we use uh, interactive lab sim simulations, uh, which allow for you to simulate things such as uh, troubleshooting a network, setting up a cluster environment, um, and also securing a network. These provide uh, as close as possible to a real life experience as to what you would get uh, when you are on the job. In addition, we all ha we have portfolio projects in, in each of our courses. These portfolio projects represent a culmination of the skills and learning objectives that you've learned throughout, throughout your course. And they serve as a, as a, uh, as a capstone or, or overview of all of the skills you've learned so that you can showcase them to employers. Uh, within some of our courses, such as the programming courses, we have a number of interactive and hands-on tools that allow for you to not only uh, develop applications as you're learning the concepts and interacting, uh, so this allows for you to, to troubleshoot your, the concepts that you're learning right as you're reading within the textbook. And so here we have some screenshots from our intro to programming course, where the course is very interactive. And as you read, you're actually typing uh, into a, into a uh, available IDE to compile and execute, execute your programs. All of our programming courses also use industry-backed uh, software applications and IDEs. So if you're developing in Java, you'll likely be, likely be using Eclipse IDE. And when you go to take uh, our platform-based development course, you'll be developing using Android Studio since you'll be developing uh, actual Android mobile applications. And so, Overall, we've, we provided a lot of information and what I want you to first take away is that uh, technical experience is, is definitely a first step, um, but there are a number of different things that will also factor into you being a successful IT professional. Uh, employers are looking for candidates that are able to communicate effectively um, they're able to problem solve and put things into context. 
uh, ask questions and provide answers as well, demonstrate great critical thinking and decision making skills, and also provide, um, demonstrate the ability to continuously learn. And one way to demonstrate that is by completing or earning your bachelor's or master's degree, as well as having um, app appropriate certificates or specializations. So here at CSU Global, we're not just preparing you to complete a degree, we're preparing you to be on a path towards lifelong learning that will ensure employers that you are ready to tackle whatever problem that they may have. And so that is what we want you, if you join us here at CSU Global, that's the important message that we want for you to take away that we're not just providing you with a degree, but we're providing you with a, a new experience in life so that you can continue on and be successful. Thank you, Charles, very much. Um, I, I think that last point is very important because I think, especially within the IT industry, what we've learned is that um, through all of our work with, with workforce and, and careers, that it, it's not necessarily about making sure that you have the technical skills because technology moves so incredibly quickly that you have to be able to keep up with that technology. So we provide the foundational knowledge, but then it really is about making sure that you continue to be successful and have a pathway for future career growth. Um, so with that, like I mentioned, we, we have kind of switched to different format. This is a very short webinar compared to normally what we do. We wanted to provide as much opportunity for any questions that you may have um, about anything, about CSU Global, about the IT industry, about those specific skills. Um, Charles obviously is, is a subject matter expert in a variety of different areas, so it's a great opportunity to ask any questions you may have. Um, I do want to quickly promote before I get to that. So use the Q&A button at the bottom or the chat and we can make sure and get your questions answered. I have a few to go over in a minute. I wanted to first uh, also address something that Charles mentioned in terms of our career coaches. We do have career services for all active students. Those are available if you have questions about what your specific goals are. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So if you get in touch with your enrollment counselor um, or, or your advisor, then you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to talk through your specific pathway as well to help build those individual career goals from there. Um, but let me jump into some of the questions we have coming in. We have a, a few that I think um, will benefit a number of people here. Uh, first and foremost, what does it take to get started in a cybersecurity field? Charles, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, well, it, it comes down to having the base technical knowledge. Uh, and so here at, our, at CSU Global, we have a cybersecurity uh, specialization as well as certificate program. Taking our specialization sequence of courses, which is five courses for a specialization and uh, six courses for an actual certificate, that will provide you with the requisite knowledge to uh, get started in an entry level position and also be able to prepare you for taking some of the advanced cybersecurity uh, certifications, such as the CISSP certification, which requires uh, not only um, a bachelor's degree, but also a, a couple of years of demonstrated industry experience within the cybersecurity area. Uh, but the, the first step is, of course, gaining the necessary technical knowledge so that you can demonstrate that to a prospective employer. Can you also expand on, on kind of that entry level certification? There's CompTIA one, offers a security one, correct? Right. There are a number of different uh, security uh, certifications available. Um, at an entry level point, the CompTIA Security Plus is considered a, a good entry level certification. Um, there are various other uh, vendors that also offer uh, industry um, supported certifications such as the, the EC, EC Council. They have a number of different certifications available at different levels. So having um, at least an entry level certification and uh, a requisite number of courses within the cybersecurity area and IT background is really what you'll need to get a good foot in the door with a prospective employer. Um, you mentioned a couple specifics in terms of project management and healthcare management, but I have some questions coming in just related to, you know, 
are, are you focused on IT jobs or what industry should you look? How, how do you make sure that, like, is there any, any industry that doesn't benefit from having some of these technical jobs? Well, that's kind of the, uh, the benefit of an IT career. It's industry agnostic, essentially. Uh, every business, every uh, industry needs IT in some way, shape, or form. Uh, at CSU Global, what you're able to do with your stackable credentials is you're able to take uh, specialization or courses in other areas that are of interest to you. So if you wanted to do something um, uh, healthcare related, you can take a number of the healthcare um, or public health uh, specializations as well so that you have the requisite IT knowledge as well as the healthcare or medical background as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a different language. Um, in terms of being able to speak both of those, which leads me right into my next question. That was an intentional segue. Um, from a programming standpoint, what languages do our courses teach at CSU Global? Okay, well, we have a, we, we focus on a number of core languages, um, which include Python and the, the BS, BSIT core. Um, our computer programming specialization focuses heavily on Java as well as C++ as well. Um, so those are going to be the, the core languages and for databases, we rely on SQL or MySQL. Um, and this may be a little bit more admissions focused, but how does the transfer process work? So if you've earned a certificate program, how do you, um, what do you need to provide, I guess, to show that your certificate, uh, that you've completed that certificate? Yeah, typically with records, all you'll need to do is uh, present a proof of the, the certificate um, to records for verification, and then they'll, they'll assign appropriate credit that way. And if it is a certificate that maybe we have not articulated yet, uh, what we do is we try to verify um, the outcomes and, and the preparation to see if credit can be offered based on that certificate. Mm -hmm. So in, in the presentation, we listed a number of certificates that we've already mapped to our curriculum. But we also, uh, if you feel you have a existing certificate that is similar to one of our courses, then we can uh, vet it out to see if we can offer credit. Great, and how would people do that? Do we just talk to an enrollment counselor and advisor and yeah. send that? Feedback? Yeah, typically that's a part of the enrollment process when they're trying to um, approve transfer credits and whatnot. They'll send the necessary documentation over to me and my lead faculty and we'll evaluate it. Okay. Um, we got a question in here that says, if the goal long term is to become a solutions architect, what jobs would be the best place to start? Uh, for a solutions architect, well, uh, depending on what area, if you want to go into uh, software or maybe cloud, um, you'll, you'll want to start with the entry level, which could be um, a beginning software uh, programmer position or a database administrator and try to work your way up. Um, it's, it, it's kind of solutions architect can have a, can go in different directions, so. Great. And again, depending on your personal area of interest, maybe a career coaching session or some way to, fur, to further personalize that, correct? Right, and our career coaching sessions are, um, you, you'd be paired with one of our uh, faculty who work in industry as well as teach for CSU Global, so they'd be able to provide you with the hands-on experience and guidance that you need. Okay. Um, let's see, I have one more question here, back to certificates for a moment. How do industry and employers view professional certificates versus academic certificates versus a degree. Is there any difference? Is there, how do people know what is the best place to start or, or where to go first? So in my view, um, uh, uh, academic certificates such as what we offer are, these are certificates that are comprehensive and there are a group of courses that are comprehensive in nature that are aimed to uh, provide you or provide something that you can provide with an employer to show you that you have requisite knowledge from an institution. So uh, a certificate is if you're if you're not interested in pursuing a full-on degree, you can 
pr participate in our certificate program, which is federally funded. So you can apply financial aid um, to get uh, requisite knowledge in the area. And sometimes that might happen if someone already has a, let's say a bachelor's degree in IT, but let's say they do not have any programming experience. They can take our computer programming certificate program, get that experience, uh, work on a number of projects, and take that to prospective employers to show that they have the knowledge because one, they already have a, a bachelor's degree and they've completed the programming certificate, which you know demonstrates continuous learning as well. Um, and certificates are always a popular topic here. Um, as regarding Microsoft cert certifications, MCSE particularly is mentioned in the question. Um, do we transfer in individual exams it look like from the charter? Someone has done the research here and may have that. So how, how does that work if you have that full certification from Microsoft? Uh, so it depends if you have the full certification, which is, it's also made up of different uh, it's kind of like a stackable cert, of, correct me if I'm wrong. So, you know, if it if that full certification contains three different subcerts, we would evaluate um, the, the objectives of each certification, uh, expected duration or contact hours to determine appropriate transfer. Okay. And that's so really, really uh, speak to an enrollment counselor, provide the documentation and with CSE Global, we're willing to review everything to see what we can transfer into actual credit. Right, and with Microsoft, their certifications can change yearly or bi-yearly, so we do continuously update um, and evaluate to see how the certification corresponds to our curriculum. Okay. And the last, oh, I see other questions coming in, so I won't say it's our last question right now. Um, I am a healthcare professional looking to make a career change and considering your online IT program with specialization in security. Do you have any particular recommendations for someone coming from a non-IT background? Great question. They're interested in the security specialization? IT program with the specialization in security. So someone that yeah. doesn't have an IT background necessarily, is there any concerns with that being, is it too technical, I guess, is part of the question? And, and one, is there a particular place to start? Um, it is. It happens a lot. As long as you have a foundational knowledge in, uh, in computing, um, the the certification is geared to kind of ramp you up with security and IT concepts, starting with our, you know, introductory course. So there isn't uh, a real concern unless you're just completely uh, not used to working with computers. Uh, we, we haven't had any problems with uh, being able to build up students as they enter into the, the certification with, not, with a, a non-computing background or non-programming background. Gotcha. Okay. Um, is it a good idea to move straight from an undergraduate degree into a master's program or uh, get some applicable work experience beforehand? What's your recommendation? My recommendation is to keep going while you're in the mindset. Um, it's, it's always, once you're in that student and coursework mindset, you know, it's, it's really easy to, to push on through. And once you finish with your master's degree, um, you'll be able to command a, even a higher uh, starting salary if you're not working in the, the field. And I'll preface that a little bit with, you can still be working in the field, right? With CSU Global's degrees being asynchronous and you can do that, you know, you might take a one class at a time, but I, I like the idea of continuing making progress towards it and still be gathering that work experience. Right. Um, we have an alumni here that is uh, completed our BSIT program already and a cybersecurity cert. Advice on advice to take them in order in order to build up the certificate last once completed the required IT coursework. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that is actually a comment from the previous question. So yes, thank you, Chris, in terms of being able to um, build up on the core knowledge and, and earn the certificates. You know, and, and the stackable credentials is kind of a new, new way to think about it. That's an industry term. I like to consider them more as building blocks towards your career. So when you look at your specific career goals, 
if you need to be able to demonstrate to employers that you have some basic IT knowledge, your programming, your, um, you know, your networking ability to be, go into the world of database, start with a certificate program perhaps, or start with particular courses as part of your degree plan that allows you to earn that specialization first. You can demonstrate that knowledge. Again, hopefully you're kind of advancing an experience level at the same time that you're advancing in your courses. So great, great comments and feedback there. Um, I believe actually that is the last question I have on my list. Unless anyone, I'll give kind of people one more minute to catch up as they do it, but not seeing anything else come in. So thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate all of the interaction, all of the feedback um, and, and the questions. And we encourage you to keep that conversation going. Um, I put on the slide there the admissions email address. If you're not working with an admissions counselor right now, they can get you in touch with Charles uh, or myself um, right away. I should have actually put both of our email addresses on there too. Um, it's charles.lively at csuglobal.edu or andrew.dixon at csuglobal.edu. Again, appreciate your kind of flexibility as we're kind of working through a new, new program here, getting this information out there. So hope this information was helpful. We encourage you to uh, start 2019 off right with continuing your education and we look forward to hearing you from you with anything else that we can provide. But have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Thanks again.